of a bitch! Get over here! Get back to you, son of a bitch! Get over here! Stop! Stop! You're on fire my ass, you son of a bitch! Get out of that plane! You're a goddamn pilot, you son of a bitch! I didn't think it was appropriate to share that with you, Jack. I'm gonna fucking appropriate your head, goddamn! How do you turn this fucking thing off? I'm gonna open up after I dump you off and get my hundred grand. You're gonna love it. Hey everyone, this is PK Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you in our unrated, underappreciated movie review series and in this edition we will focus on the crime action comedy Midnight Rump. Released on July the 20th 1988 it stars Robert De Niro, Charles Grodin, Yafet Kotto and it was directed by Martin Brest. Now the story of Midnight Run is that we are set in present day where we follow bounty hunter Jack Walsh who has sent the assignment of bringing in accountant Jonathan Mardukas, also known as the Duke, back to Los Angeles as part of a bail bond. Now the Duke is wanted as he embezzled 15 million from mob boss Jimmy Serrano and overall gave all of the money to charity. Now Jack has 5 days to bring the Duke back to Los Angeles but comes across various antagonists in trying to track him down from FBI agents to rival bounty hunters and also the henchmen sent by Jimmy Serrano. The overall story sees Jack and the Duke form a common bond and understanding as they continually find themselves on the run and fending for their lives. Now I absolutely love Midnight Run, it really is one of those movies that's so endlessly fun and entertaining, full of great one-liners and so many hilarious moments as well as great action sequences as well. It really was part of that great phase of comedies from the 1980s that very much relied on the twin dynamic or the double act in terms of lead characters. We saw this type of movie so often from the likes of Trading Places, Planes, Trains, Automobiles, Twins and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and Midnight Run is very much part of that great run of movies as well as having a fast pace and liveliness and overall bright tone. We talk about the two lead characters and first of all we have to mention Robert De Niro who of course at the release of this movie had already established himself as one of the all time modern day great actors within the industry with a huge series of powerful performances in serious films from the likes of Taxi Driver, Mean Streets, Raging Bull and The Godfather Part 2. But what's so special about his performance here is that we see a far more loose, fun, comedic performance as Walsh but it's not something that is delved into slapstick or parody. He still plays it straight for the most part but here we have a character who has to think fast on his feet, improvise and he has a personality that is full of wisecracks and attitude and whilst it may not be amongst his most iconic roles, for me it's one of his most sheerly enjoyable performances and it's so great to see Robert De Niro far more relaxed and look like he's actually enjoying performing within the movie. He's well complimented by Charles Grodin as the Duke who's much more of a grounded presence and we see this character overall has a good conscience despite the fact that he stole from the mob boss and I think his character is a great counterbalance to De Niro overall and the chemistry that between the two characters is absolutely fantastic as they constantly bicker and argue and it just carries the movie so well all the way through the story. Now the movie does take detours every now and again to try and deepen these characters a little bit as we delve into Walsh's backstory concerning his family who he hasn't seen for over 9 years. We have one scene when he goes and visits them halfway throughout the film and we delve also into his overall motivations into wanting to take down Jimmy Serrano. But despite these scenes, the movie never gets bogged down by sentimentality or emotional weight which is good because that would spoil a lot of the fun that we have throughout the story. Now as great as De Niro and Grodin are, I think it's unfair to say that the movie completely relies on them as we have some great supporting roles that every bit add to the overall entertainment of this film. 
I look at John Ashton who plays Marvin Doffler as the rival bounty hunter who's always chasing down Jack and the Duke throughout the country. I absolutely love all of the moments where we see Jack falsely calling out his name before hitting him. It's absolutely hilarious at times and once again I think it's a really good performance from Ashton in the role. We have Joe Paltolino in his usual energetic and abrasive self as Eddie Moscone who was the bell bondsman who will use whatever it takes to get the Duke back as he spent 450000 on the bell bond. I also like Dennis Farina as the mob boss Jimmy Serrano who's always threatening his henchmen as they continually mess up in trying to apprehend both Jack and the Duke. I love all of the scenes where he's constantly threatening his lawyer telling him to not say a word and once again this just adds so much enjoyment to the overall film. We also have to credit the great Danny Elfman once again for his musical score which adds so much fun to the overall chase sequences that we see throughout the film and also just adds to the levity. So once again great music from one of the greatest composers within all of movies. So if I had to give an overall score for Midnight Run I would give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. So when we go on to the overall release of the movie and overall it actually was a financial success grossing over 81.6 million on a budget of 35 million and it also got really good critical reception with many praising the chemistry between both De Niro and Charles Grodin and as I mentioned here many people were actually glad to see De Niro in a far more comedic and a far more sprightly and lighter performance. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this review Midnight Run doesn't really get looked back as fondly as all of the other classic comedies that we saw within the 1980s and I can't really think of why maybe because it doesn't quite have the same iconic lines or iconic scenes but to me that doesn't really matter I think overall Midnight Run is every bit as sheerly enjoyable and really is a lesson into how you can have lots of comedy and entertainment without delving too much into gross out material or identity politics. So absolutely great action comedy a Midnight Run, definitely a movie that's worth checking out and definitely a film that is unrated and underappreciated many years after its overall release. So those are my overall thoughts and feelings and review of Midnight Run, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of review and would like to see me cover other films of this like or any other movies within the channel then let me know within the comments and I will see if I can provide further commentary on the film that you've suggested in the future. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now, take care of yourselves, stay at safe distances and I will see you very very soon.